we've roughly been out here without seeing a port for you know 90 to 100 days roughly uh, it's impactful uh, this is something that's not normal uh, but we've been able to take a, what I call a, a knee and take a break uh, move ourselves to a position of strength uh, ie uh, more more or less a very self-defensive posture and uh, when we get the ability uh, we do give uh, the entire ship a day off uh, and we do MWR, uh, morale, welfare, recreation type events. Uh, we also have uh, a ton of support for the sailors regarding counseling, resiliency. Uh, there's some things that the captain will probably talk about uh, that uh, is unique to this ship is uh, we have actually Wi-Fi, uh, which is something new. Uh, it's new for an old, old fart like me, uh, but uh, some, some of that stuff matters. Uh, to these young sailors and uh, giving them the ability just to shoot a text once a day, they're good to go. Uh, and uh, it's something that we, we keep on as long as we can. If it violates any kind of OPSEC or it, it puts us in a defensive posture and I have to shut it down, uh, unfortunately we, we have done that a couple of times just to make sure that my utmost responsibility out here is to obviously protect the sailors and uh, the equipment is second, but the sailors are first. As with any U.S. force that deploys, we have the inherent right of self-defense. Any threat that comes towards any of these ships or any of my aircraft that are out here, there is no question. Uh, that rule of engagement that we live under and we have for decades is still something that we utilize and we have been utilizing uh, during this, this period we've been here. Uh, that's something we train to and uh, it's baked in our DNA, it's baked in our culture and it's baked in our leadership. They know, i.e. the captains of these ships and the uh, air crew that fly these aircraft, they know without question, I will never get involved in a decision to take self-defensive actions. That is delegated down to the lowest level uh, and they're all trained to, to have what we call mission command. Now, when we start to talk about the defensive strikes that we actually execute, there's a, a full process that we go through uh, to make sure that uh, the decision goes all the way to the president uh, regarding uh, taking active self-defense measure, I'm sorry, active defensive strikes that are uh, to take those threats out before they're actually employed against us. And that, uh, that is uh, completely done through a legal process uh, that's uh, all outside the bounds of self-defense. And like I said, we've been able to make an impact over the last couple of months in, uh, in reducing their capability. Espedes yes. uh, is an EU mission. That's that's the newest mission. Prosperity Guardian. I'll talk about that uh, real quick first. That's you know over 25 nations that are openly in support of Prosperity Guardian. We have other nations that don't want to publicly speak, but they are in support. Whether they're providing intelligence, uh, logistical support, uh, the active support for uh, Prosperity Guardian by way of some of the partners that you're familiar with, the UK is one, uh, the French, the Italians, uh, the Den Denmark, uh, the, all these countries have ships that are actually, and the Germans have ship, the ships that are actually out here actively supporting uh, the free flow of maritime commerce. And that's what this is about. This is what the Houthis chose to do, is basically take weapons and shoot them at innocent merchant traffic that's traveling through here in violation of international law. And the last part that you asked about was the EU mission set, which is new. Uh, we have a, uh, a one-star admiral that's out here right now from uh, the Italian Navy. I have uh, weekly conversations with him to make sure that uh, we're completely aligned with our operations. We're not stepping on each other and our comms, uh, communication back and forth is completely suitcased. And the more important thing is that the rules of engagement are discussed when there's nothing really being shot uh, so that we, we're clear-eyed in who's defending what and at what time.
We have uh, routinely been requested to escort specific U.S. carriers, uh, whether they're carrying U.S. cargo or they're owned by United States companies. Uh, and that request goes through a process. Uh, and then uh, if we can execute it, we prioritize those ships uh, that are escorted by U.S. ships. Although sometimes we have had coalition partners and U.S. in concert uh, working together to escort those high profile missions of, of ships that uh, require escort and ask for it, by the way. Uh, some of, the, TT, some of the, the training and tactics and procedures that we've learned over time as we do these escort missions, that is completely uh, line, like horizontal communication. Uh, we have uh, provided all that information to any of the ships that come out here that could possibly be in that role. Yes, there have been attempts. Uh, unsuccessful, I might add. We have had some recent successes. Uh, a couple of months ago, I don't know if you were tracking, we did a successful uh, interdiction. Unfortunately, we lost uh, two SEALs uh, during that uh, interdiction. Uh, there are other things that I can't go into that uh, uh, we have interdicted maritime traffic. Uh, we also interdict uh, in the cyber world as well. So there are, there are capabilities that we have uh, that uh, we have utilized uh, through channels that I cannot talk about, but uh, we've been successful in uh, what we call breaking their kill chain, and we've been able to, uh, to, to execute some of those missions uh, here lately. And it's, it's like I said, it's, it's been impactful to them. Uh, the problem with their resupply, though, is we don't know where they started. In other words, how many weapons, how much capability that they have acquired over numerous years, and primarily through the Iranians. And not only can I say that the Iranians are obviously in support from a weapons posture perspective, they also support in the intelligence world, they also support in targeting that we know of, and they also support an expertise, providing expert level advice on how to employ some of these weapons that they have given the Houthis. We assess that that uh, ship that is now in the Gulf of Aden has provided some sort of intelligence uh, information on maritime ships. I won't go into specifics on that. There has not. Uh, they have been present uh, through the NEDIF. I think you're familiar with the, with the uh, Naval Ex Ex Expeditionary Task Force that the Chinese have routinely out here for counter piracy. They've been nearby when ships have been attacked. And I will say, none of them have offered to assist any of those innocent merchant traffic that's, uh, that's been attacked. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for telling our story. Uh, this is something that uh, is very unique. It's something we train to. However, the, the couldn't be more proud of the, the sailors that are out here uh, executing this mission day in, day out, 24 hours a day. And they do it because they, they love their business. They, they're professionals at it. Uh, and I'm proud to stand by them.